Magnus in Sweden writes to me, Hey Paul, I have, during the last couple of years, replaced my old $2,000 system with a high-end system worth nearly $40,000. Yikes, that's a lot. Good job. Where the cost of the speakers are half of that. With my new system, I am enjoying superb detail and transparency, a big, wide, holographic soundstage with pitch black background. Everything is wonderful except one major thing. The mid-range sounds thin, lacking body, and therefore unnatural. In that regard, my old $1,000 speakers sounded better. I've tried several different amplifiers, preamps, both tubes and solid state that I have borrowed from others, but the mid-range still sounds thin. So it seems to be related to my new high-end speakers. Is this how high-end is supposed to sound? Am I just used to a colored sound? Or <clears throat> could it be that the new speakers are so much better in the lows and highs that acoustical problems of my room now become more evident compared to my old speakers? Well, <laughs> sorry. Oh, goodness. You know, mid-range is by far the hardest thing to get right. It's not that hard to get the bass right. It's, well, it's tough to get tweeters right. I mean, a lot of companies base their entire line on the tweeter. I remember Arnie Nudell when we were at Genesis. Arnie was the founder of Infinity and the designer of the big IRS-5 loudspeakers. And I remember sitting down in his living room. He showed me this new little circular ribbon tweeter. And he said, let me tell you something, Paul. The entire basis of a company, of a line of speakers, is all based on this tweeter. Not this tweeter, but a tweeter. And everything else comes with it. The hardest thing to get right is the tweeter. And he had a point there, but I actually, over time, disagree with Arnold. The Arnold. And I think it's actually the mid-range. That is by far the hardest thing to get right. And when Chris Brunhaver came up with this planar uh, uh, mid-range driver, that's what sold me on this speaker. It was that mid-range to have that fullness and the bloom. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And it's rare that speakers get it. So no, Magnus, I don't think you should compromise. I don't know that it's your speakers. It may well be. I don't know what your speakers are, so it's really hard to, to tell. But I can tell you that the mid-range is the single most difficult thing to get right. And usually what is wrong is it sounds thin. It's not robust in that. And if you imagine for a moment, th think about how this speaker any speaker is designed. So let's assume that your speakers are like the Aspen FR30s and they are a three-way, okay? So this speaker has the, the woofers, the tweeter, and the mid-range, right? And that covers the entire range. Well, think about the, the, the challenge of this Mr. Mid-range here. Mr. Mid-range has to go down and meet with the woofers and has to go up and meet with the tweeter, right? This is what's done in the crossover. So here he is sitting in the middle of everything, but he has to mate with this guy and he has to mate with that guy. And that's a challenge because integrating that so you don't hear that transition between tweeter and mid-range, the transition between woofer and mid-range. Uh, I watch Chris do all of this and he's amazing at it, but it's a struggle. Do you take the woofers up higher? Because if this mid-range is sounding a little thin, one of the things you can do is you take the woofer up higher to fill in that thin sound so that what you're hearing is actually more out of the top of the woofer. But as soon as you do that, now you have a problem with the woofer. Now the woofer has to be of a certain quality and speed and you start compromising and giving up. It's a real challenge. It's a big challenge. And only the best designers in the world really have a chance at getting it right. And two ways are even worse, and they're harder. So my guess, it's your speakers. And I know you paid $20,000 for those speakers, and I'm sorry. Um, 
I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough one. I, you might focus on the synergistic aspects of your electronics. So a lot of people who have thin mid-ranges have moved over to all vacuum tube stuff or things that are much richer and fuller, maybe even to a point of excess in that area. So you could try that and see if, if you can't lean it in that way to make it work with your speakers. So anyway, best I got. Good luck with that and let me know what happens. All right, thanks.